Hey guys, this is Jake, and this is my video response to the question of the month. Whether or not we should use performance style blades, and where do we draw the line? In my personal opinion, I think that, in one hand, I think that you should try to use as many swords as you can. If you can use um, a variety of swords and cut really well with all of them, then I think you're really you're going to be a really accomplished uh, swordsman and freestyle cutter. But on the other hand, if you want to display your skill, then I think a traditional dimension uh, sword is the best way to uh, prove your skill. So I'm going to be showing you guys some um, facts from a physics standpoint and give you guys a little bit of um, information from a physics standpoint as to why different swords cut easier than others and why certain swords um, don't cut as well as others. So for a an example of a traditional dimension uh, style sword, my SPG is a good example. This is my SPG katana. It's a traditional dimension sword. The sakihaba or the blade width at the tip is about 27 millimeters and the blade thickness is only about 5 millimeters. So it's a very traditional style um, blade. It has some niku to it. So the edge angle I calculated to be about 21 to 22 degrees. So that's a fairly wide edge angle as far as um, a sword is concerned. And from a performance standpoint, um, it disturbs the sword more because of wider edge, um, wider edge angle. I mean, and because of that it's harder to get consistent clean uh, trick cuts with using this style of sword. Um, that's why I say if you want to prove your skill then use a traditional dimension uh, sword. Okay. Now to show a different sword this is my NAS katana and this is a competition geometry sword it's much wider as you can see the width of the edge is about 20 millimeters and the um, blade thickness is only about 4.4 uh, millimeters so as you can probably guess the edge angle is also going to be much shallower and this sword doesn't have a lot of niku to begin with so the edge angle is going to be about 13 and a half degrees that's what I calculated for this sword. So the SPG was about 21, 22 degrees for the edge angle. This MAS is only about 13, 13 and a half degrees. So this sword, you know, can hold a sharper edge. It's a thinner edge, and it disturbs target less when um, when you cut. So a sword like this is definitely funner to use, and you can definitely get cleaner cuts. Um, and one thing like Eric mentioned though is using a thinner um, blade makes it a little more fragile but you have to be very very precise with it because if you're not precise with it your cut is going to be super clean and you know you're not going to draw out the full potential of swords like these and next up is the ultimate performance sword and that is here is a Curry style sword a good example of that is a Yuki. This is a Munatoshi Yuki. Um, this is actually one of the older generations, so um, it's also seen a lot of use. Uh, this blade, the Sakihaba or the blade width that about here measures about 28 millimeters, so it's a little bit wider. Um, the thing is, this blade we've used it and resharpened it so many times that it's actually um, a lot less wide than the factory specs. Um, I believe this fact factory specs is about 30 millimeters um, at the tip. But anyways, um, this blade, since it is one of the um, better um, generations, the better models, um, the blade thickness at the tip is only about 2.4 millimeters. Okay, so as you can guess, the edge angle is going to be really, really shallow. For this blade, I calculated it to be about 5 degrees. The edge angle is about 5 degrees. 
So that's why um, a lot of people call Hirazukuri blades, especially super thin ones like these, to be cheater blades. In a sense, that is true. If you cut um, well, if you have good edge alignment, good speed, good technique, then a blade like this is, I mean, it's going to pass through soft targets like it's butter, and you're going to achieve like um, cuts that are pretty much impossible to do with any other style of sword. Um, but there are, you know, pros and cons to all these different styles of swords. Um, like I mentioned before, the traditional style blade is a little bit thicker and it's not as wide. So everything is much more compact. When you get a blade like that, it's going to be much more durable um, and maybe a little bit heavier, but it's going to have some good presence to it. So when you cut with it, the blade won't really um, slow down as it hits the target and the, the greater kinetic energy that it has will make the actual cut easier on you, okay? But the uh, competition uh, geometry, like my MAS, even though it is a um, uh, thinner and wider blade, um, it is also a little bit lighter, but this blade, um, you can, uh, it doesn't have a lot of, um, how should I say, uh, it doesn't have a lot of presence to um, the blade. So handling is a little bit easier um, when you cut through targets because the edge is pretty thin, but it still has some good weight to it. Um, it doesn't slow down um, a lot through the cut. Um, but you can kind of tell if your edge alignment is off that the blade slows down. Um, and also I'm ignoring uh, surface friction. But this Yuki, this particular Yuki, since it's so thin, this blade itself, um, or the sword without the scabbard, only weighs about 1.7, uh, 1.8 pounds. So it's really, really light. But the thing is, when, when I'm cutting tatami and stuff, even though it's super super sharp and super thin um, because it doesn't have a lot of mass and kinetic energy with uh, the sword when I cut um, I can feel the sword slowing down a lot so I have to really muscle through the cut and put in extra extra power just to cut through um, simple tatami so that's one of the drawbacks with using such a thin blade but I mean cutting like targets like uh, newspaper sheet, newspaper rolls, uh, bottles, um, super fun, super easy to do. So, I mean, you know, um, there are pros and cons to all these different kinds of swords. Um, and I really, really suggest that if you have the money, you know, buy different kinds of swords with different geometries and get to know them, you know, because some days you want to really challenge yourself and maybe only use the traditional style blade. Other times you would want to just have fun and pull some really, really cool cuts. You know, so all these different swords are used for different targets and different styles of cutting. So, you know, it's up to you uh, as far as what style of cutting that you want to do and what kind of cuts that you want to pull off. Um, but as far as the challenges and competitions. I think that the traditional dimensions uh, Shinoki Zakuri swords should be used so that it's everyone's on pretty much the same uh, playing field and that um, it's just a proof of skill at that point not how well your sword cuts. Um, yeah so that's my uh, take on this question um, and hopefully I gave you guys a pretty um, basic introduction to it as far as, you know, a physics standpoint is concerned. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, as always, cut safe and have fun.